So this last short section, I just want to make a couple quick notes about professional development in the GIS, uh, in the in the GIS geospatial uh, uh, industry. Um, if you're interested in pursuing this further. Okay, so this is just some notes about the geospatial job market. These are some of the common uh, skills or sorry, job titles that you see listed. So GIS technician, GIS analyst. Generally, analyst positions are considered to be generally a little higher level than technicians, meaning that they generally have higher um, uh, requirements for entry. So maybe a master's degree or more coursework or more work experience. Uh, remote sensing analysts, if you're working specifically with remotely sensed data like multispectral data, LIDAR elevation data. GIS programmers and web developers are generally people that are required to have some type of pr programming experience. For those people doing spatial analysis right now, Python's a really well-known language. R is also commonly used. Um, if you're doing more like web development or developing dashboards or interactive web maps, you may be interested in developing t um, some web-related coding skills such as HTML, CSS, JavaScript, learning libraries or frameworks such as jQuery or Bootstrap, um, or web mapping APIs like the ArcGIS Maps a a SDK for JavaScript or the Leaflet API or, or Mapbox API. Um, people, that, another kind of key set of programming or related skills are things that go on on the server side. So for example, working with databases, using SQL structured query language, doing web-based or server-side programming with things like PHP or Node.js or, or Django or something like that. Um, some other common jobs are things like aerial survey technicians for collecting LIDAR or aerial orthophotography, survey technicians for doing field work, RTK surveys, drone-based work, image analysts for extracting information from images, um, so anyway, there's lots of other job postings, but those are just some common ones. Another one probably worth mentioning is like a uh, project manager um, because a lot of more advanced uh, GIS positions, you may end up supervising others, running projects, uh, supervising people. So um, those are commonly more like GIS manager or project manager type positions. Um, and those are generally less entry level um, than some of the other ones listed here. There are lots of different skills and the course like this, we cover kind of a broad set of skills. So, I mean, the beginning we mainly focused on data, cartography, working with maps, working with projections, finding data. In the back part of the class, we talked more broadly, uh, broadly about different types of analysis techniques. Um, using different types of data, vector, raster, terrain data, modeling, interpolation, spatial statistics. Um, there are different skills that you may want to con con continue to develop um, depending on what your interests are and how you may continue to use GIS um, into the future. There are a few that I think are super important for all geospatial professionals, so things like spatial problem solving, being able to do spatial analysis, being able to troubleshoot software, being able to use interpret simple statistics, tilt test or models. There are some that are maybe a little bit more specific for certain types of tasks, like any type of experience with working with databases, working with SQL, managing databases is super valuable for GIS professionals. Um, so if you ever have the chance to take a spatial or even just a non-spatial database class or learn some SQL, I highly recommend that. One of the top um, kind of skill sets right now that are really marketable is being able to create web maps, interactive web maps, web apps, mobile apps, whatnot. So if you get a chance to take or a WebGIS course or a web development course, I would highly recommend it. We do offer one of those here. We have a WebGIS course offered through um, the the West Virginia or offered through what the West Virginia View website or provided there focused on client side technologies where you learn ArcGIS Online and associated technologies along with basic web development with, development with HTML and CSS and get it and you get started with JavaScript and web mapping APIs. 
Again, Python programming and Python scripting is a hot topic right now. We have courses on that here at the university. On West Virginia View, we have a course on basic data science called Methods in Open Science that explores the open Python libraries for doing data science. At WVU, uh, we have a professor who teaches a course um, in spatial programming uh, using a lot of the ArcGIS uh, and ArcPy environment uh, related uh, tools. Um, and the, if you're interested in just learning some Python coding in general, there are a lot of free resources online or even courses online that are fairly cheap. Again, Python is kind of a big deal if you're interested predominantly in, in spatial analysis. JavaScript, on the other hand, is more useful if you're wanting to learn like web-based programming for creating web maps and web apps. Um, yeah, so uh, just a real quick, go back to our, our courses. Again, this course, Methods in Open Science, there's a lot of Python and R in that course. This is the course you just took, JS Science. Open Source JIS Science is similar to this course, but using QGIS and other open source software. Remote sensing is working with imagery, satellite data. Digital cartography is map design. Client side web JS, I mentioned earlier, that covers ArcGIS Online, HTML, CSS, Bootstrap, jQuery, and JavaScript um, a mapping APIs. This open source spatial analytics course is a course in R doing open spatial analytics using the R language and environment. And this geospatial deep learning classes, deep learning and prim primarily makes use of Python. Um, just a couple other kind of skill sets. Um, we all make maps, graphics, charts, figures. So any experience with map design and graphic design can be really useful. Taking some time to learn some graphic design software tools like Adobe Illustrator, Adobe Photoshop, um, Adobe Premiere, um, or open source tools, things like GIMP or, or Inkscape could, is, are very useful. Um, you should try, to, as you develop professionally, to become better at a, a better communicator, both orally, graphically, and um, in the written form. Um, and then obviously skills related to image analysis, image interpretation, remote sensing, working with GPS, working with survey technology, working with drones. Um, there are some professional certifications that are available. One option is the GISP, which is the Geospatial Information Systems Professional Certification, which is offered through the GIS Certification Institute. And it used to be that you had to have a certain uh, number of years of work experience, and it was a point-based system that basically showed that you had done enough things to be able to call yourself a GIS professional. And then you had to maintain that um, by reapplying every five years and showing that you were keeping up with your professional de development. Now they do require an exam. I've been told it's not super difficult. Um, so anyway, if you do get into the GIS realm, um, if you get a few years of work experience under your belt specifically and you want to keep, in, keep advancing in this discipline, pursuing your GISP is generally a good idea. Um, and once you have it, it's not super difficult to maintain, and it is pretty well recognized across the GIS um, industry. There are some other certificates or certifications that are available. For example, ASPRS, the American Society for Photogrammetry and Remote Sensing, offers a series of different certificates that you could look into. To be honest, I, don't, I haven't looked at those or pursued them, so I'm not real versed in them other than that they exist, and I know people who have, have went through that process. So it would be worth looking into if you're interested in more professional certifications. Um, Esri offers some certifications specific to their own software. There's a desktop developer and enterprise level certifications. The desktop one is not super difficult. I think it's something that a person could do following an undergraduate degree or, or a certificate. Um, I'm not that familiar with the developer enterprise ones to talk to them, talk on those, but if you have, I would say if you're a professional and you're mainly coding and doing development or you're working at enterprise level with databases, it would benefit you maybe to consider doing those exams um, at some point. There are also some professional societies that you might want to consider joining. Um, 
Examples include the, the AAG, American Association of Geographers. There are subsections specifically for GIS and remote sensing and spatial analysis. Um, in West Virginia, that we have the West Virginia AGP, which is the West Virginia Association for Geospatial Professionals. So we offer courses. Um, we have a conference every year. Um, you get on a listserv. Um, a lot of the people that are involved in GIS um, within the state are, are involved in or at least um, a member of the West Virginia AGP. And other states and even sometimes regions have other have similar um, organizations. Another good one is ASPRS, American Society for Photogrammetry and Remote Sensing. Um, it's kind of more remote sensing, but, but it does have kind of a more broader geospatial component also. Note that if you are a student, you can generally get fairly reduced um, rates and fees, both to go to conferences and to join um, professional societies. So who actually does like the hiring of geospatial professionals? Um, again, this is changing uh, constantly, but these are just some general notes. So, at the, so you can get jobs at local, state, and federal government. At the county level, you're generally getting hired by like assessor's offices, people you know, involved with surveying. Um, at the state level, we, in West Virginia, we have things like the Department of Environment Protection, the Division of Natural Resources, the Department of Transportation, even here at WVU. So um, the, uh, Healthy Human Resources is another example. Um, and then other states will have similar, or, similar state agencies that hire people for mapping and, and spatial analysis and cartography and whatnot. At the federal level, you're looking at things like the census, Department of Agriculture, which includes like the Forest Service, Bureau of Land Management, Department of Interiors, Department of Defense, Environmental Protection Agency. Um, that's again just some examples at the federal level in the U.S. Um, kind of private, it's, company, it's common to be hired by like surveying, mapping companies, aerial surveying companies, companies that work with drone data. Um, consulting companies could be things like uh, federal contractors, um, like environmental, um, defense related, um, health related, um, geopolitical, things like that. Um, so um, there are also contractors that work in certain spaces like um, hazards, geohazards, flooding, um, social justice, things like that. Um, there is some hiring done by, uh, within higher ed for GIS professionals. It could be programmers, analysts. Um, if you're interested in like becoming a geospatial researcher, or faculty, or instructor, that generally requires a, a doctorate. In, a doctorate in most cases, but in some cases, you can teach with a master's degree, or or uh, or yeah, or work in a research lab with a master's degree. This is just pointing out some kind of like common trends right now that are kind of hot topics. So the 3D GIS and geovisualization is obviously a, a big one. Um, things like video game engines, um, things like, uh, I think, uh, like Unreal Engine. Um, I th we're going to see more and more development of 3D GIS, especially when you consider things like virtual reality, uh, headsets, augmented reality, things like that. Um, drones, um, you can get your drones, like your, your pilot license. There are companies that hire or contract drone operators to, to collect data. Um, and knowing about the rules and regulations and permitting and stuff is super important in that context. Um, issues of like big data, data science, data mining, large computation, that's a big topic now. Any experience you can get with that, parallel computing, deep learning, machine learning um, can be useful, especially for like more research oriented or data science oriented jobs. Um, working with different types of data, so things like laser scanning data, both aerial LIDAR, satellite based LIDAR, terrestrial LIDAR, mobile LIDAR, um, there's, there's lots of uses of that data. So people that can work with those, extract information from them generally um, are able to find jobs. Um, working with things like hyperspectral data for things like ecology, chemistry um, can be useful. Uh, working with GIS, uh, real-time GIS, where data are collected in real time and made available to the public. Um, 
so anyway, there's lots and lots of uses of, geos of GIS, geospatial sciences, and a wide variety of disciplines um, across the you know, hard sciences, the humanities, uh, policy, defense, land management um, that, um, that use, you know, where GIS is super applicable. So um, part of sometimes you may see yourself as a GIS professional working in a specific discipline, or you may see yourself as a disciplinary professional who uses GIS as a tool. Okay, that's it. So uh, this was just a short section before we end the class. I just want to point out a couple notes about where you can go from here in terms of taking more courses, developing more knowledge, and developing as a GIS or geospatial professional.